getting ready to start a new series um, called Homestead Meal Planning Mondays. Now, the videos I hope to have published on Mondays, but I'm actually going to do this on Sunday is when I'm going to prepare them. And I talk in one of my videos that I'll link above on how to be successful homesteading that being efficient with your time is absolutely important. Now, Sundays is about the only day I don't do too much of anything other than I take care of the animals, I do church, which right now is virtual, and then I usually try to plan some kind of a meal that I can eat most of the week. And I like to use meals that um, have multi-purposes. The same way that I use a lot of tools. A tool needs to be multi-purpose. A meal needs to be multi-purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, my take on an instant pot. Barbecue chicken that you can then shred. You can use it as a main meal with some vegetables. You can use it on a sandwich. Um, you can add it over mashed potatoes. There's many different ways that you can use this once it's done. Not only that, it'll store for five or six days in a refrigerator once you make it. Or if you vacuum seal it or add it to a freezer bag, it'll store for up to six months in a freezer. So you can make a lot of it and then say you only want to have it two or three days, you can freeze part of it and then eat the rest. So it's really simple to make. You can make, make it with boneless chicken breasts or boneless thighs or, or if you got processed chicken off your homestead, you could use a whole entire chicken if you wanted to. But you basically need three or four pounds of chicken meat. That's most important. You're going to need one onion, two to three cloves of garlic, one half cup of chicken stock, uh, some olive oil. You're going to need some barbecue sauce, and that's going to be divided. You're going to need one cup and then a half cup. You're going to need one teaspoon of paprika. So basically it's really simple to do. Let me set this camera down and we'll get started. Now normally when I make these meals, I don't actually measure anything. I just eyeball it, but, um, you know, I, I learned how to do this from somewhere, a recipe, and then I modified the recipe for my own needs. Basically you want to put, very first thing, it goes in your Instant Pot. You can also do this in a slow cooker. The difference is the Instant Pot cooks for 10 minutes. The slow cooker is going to need to cook anywhere from four to eight hours. So Instant Pot put you about a tablespoon of oil. I use olive oil, you could use vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever kind of oil you want to use. I pretty much use olive oil anytime I need to cook anything. So right now the Instant Pot is off. I do need to mention that. So we're off. Next thing that goes in is the chicken. Next thing you do is you add your chicken stock, shake this up, in case it's settled some, I don't hardly ever use a whole one of these. You're going to do maybe a third of a cup or a little bit more. This is actually four pounds of chicken, I think I'm actually going to do a little bit more. What the chicken stock does is if you didn't have some liquid in here your chicken's going to dry out just from the way that the instant pot works so add chicken stock you could add chicken broth if you don't have chicken stock um, you could add beef or a uh, chicken bouillon cube and some water there's all different things you can do next thing you're going to want to add is your onions now this is a yellow onion, a sweet onion. I want it to be pretty small 
So I'm actually going to use a cheese grater. If you don't have a cheese grater like this, let me show you another one. might actually be a little bit quicker. You could use one like this. Of course, you're going to have to be prepared for your eyes to water. This little bit that's left over, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in there. I got down about as far as I can get without getting my fingers too bad. Want to take and get as much of this off of here as you can. There's that one. Next thing that's going to go in, your garlic. Two to three cloves, depending on the size. Next thing that goes in, your one cup of barbecue sauce. Use whatever kind of barbecue sauce you want. I'm using... Sweet Baby Ray's original, just what I had on hand, probably left over from something I did in the summer. We want about one cup to go in or slightly more. Paprika, one teaspoon of paprika goes in after or last. And go ahead and give it a quick stir. Just to kind of get everything. Somewhat mixed up. Let me see what we look like. So now the lid goes on. I hit pressure cook. Had some barbecue sauce on my finger. Pressure cook, increase the time. Now this is about four pounds, so I'm gonna go ahead and Set it to 12 minutes for 3 pounds. It's closer to 10 minutes. Turn it on. Now the pressure canner is going to build up pressure. Once it builds up pressure, the timer will start. It will count down. Then it automatically switches over to keep warm. So once we get that part done, I'll bring you back. It will be a few minutes. According to the camera, this took 11 minutes and 52 seconds before I edited it down to make this. Okay, so the timer is down to the last minute. Actually, it just kicked off. So, it switched over to keep warm. And now you're going to set a timer and wait 10 minutes. 
That 10 minutes allows the pressure to be reduced inside the Instant Pot. A lot of times I'll take and actually shut it off. So hit cancel. Now it went to off. Now I'll wait 10 minutes. And what's going to happen is, let me see if I can point this out where you can see it. Hold on just a minute. There it is. Right there. That little metal thing sticking up. Right back there, in between the two black round things, you're going to wait 10 minutes, and then if that hasn't fallen all the way down, you're going to do the what's called a manual pressure release. You don't want to do the manual pressure release as soon as the timer kicks off because that'll make chicken tough. So I'll wait 10 minutes, I'll bring you back. Okay, it's actually been a little bit more than 10 minutes, more like about 12 minutes. Let me point this out again. This is the metal part right here. This is the metal part right here that needs to fall down. And see, if I push on it, you'll hear it. So that tells us that it hasn't vented yet, but it's been 10 minutes, so we can go ahead and do the manual vent. The manual vent is nothing more than right here next to it, there's two black things. One of them says press, and that's basically what we're going to do. I need to turn this a little bit though, so I can reach it without burning myself. So when I press this down, it's going to vent this. You can hear it, maybe. Now the lid on this instant pot won't open until the pressure is released. It's a safety feature. So once all the pressure is released, go ahead and take the lid off. Admire your work. And you're going to want to stir this up. Probably at this point in time, you're going to want to stir it up with a couple of forks. The forks is going to help shred it. Now what I do is I let, I shred this up the best I can. Then I put the lid back on this and I let it soak for about another half an hour. That lets the barbecue sauce soak into the chicken once it's been cut open. Now different barbecue sauces will have different amounts of water in them and the Sweet Baby Ray's has actually got quite a bit of water so I'm going to have to drain some of this off after I let this soak for 30 minutes before I put the other barbecue sauce on it. Let me show you what I'm talking about because it's almost like I've got a soup in there See how much liquid there is? So now that I've got that chicken cut up, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on this and let it sit for about 30 minutes. I'm going to put it on keep warm. Which is on low for about 30 minutes. I'll bring you back then. After the 30 minutes is up, you can see I basically take a bowl with a coriander. Go ahead and cancel the time on this for the keep warm part. You may have to release the pressure again. Take the lid off. Now this pan that's inside here, a lot of the times it's not that hot at the top, but I guarantee you it's hot at the bottom. I'm going to move it to the side, then I'm going to grab me some pot holders, Christmas pot holders, wintertime pot holders. 
and then I'm going to drain off some of this liquid. Now you could probably reuse this liquid for something. But you're going to find that a lot of this is actually chicken grease. So this would kind of be like a chicken stock. You can see I'm basically just trying to get some of the liquid out. Most of it out. Once I got most of it out, I put the pan back in the Instant Pot. Let me show you what we've got and what it looks like. So that's what it looks like now with the pan back in the Instant Pot. I'm going to take the coriander because there are some bits of chicken that's in it that I want to keep. Edible sizes of chicken, see it there? And I'm going to put that back in the Instant Pot. Now, we've got our barbecue sauce that we haven't used yet, about a half a cup. And I'm not going to measure it, I know it's about a half a cup. And I'm going to add that to this. Give this a quick stir, and we are ready to serve. Probably need to shred some of this. Some of there's some bigger chunks in here that still need shredded. Now that chicken broth, if you wanted to keep it with the barbecue sauce, if you're going to make barbecue chicken again, you can basically just reuse that. What you need to do is take and get you a mason jar. Make sure you got a lid and a band for it. Let your chicken broth cool down. I save all of my bands during canning season, even if they've already been used, because or all my lids, seals, and then I need to find a band. And what that does is that allows me, if I want to store something in a refrigerator, all I got to do is find a band and a lid, which I got plenty of always. Of course, the one I grabbed is probably the most rusted one I own. So now I can add the broth to this. A used seal and a band on a mason jar. I can add the broth to that, which I'm getting ready to do. Store it in the refrigerator until the next time that I need chicken broth or chicken stock. Now this has got barbecue in it. But either way, it's still reusable. And it made almost a whole quart. So I'm going to put this on loosely. Here, let me move this camera down where you can see it. I'm going to put the lid on kind of loose. Because this chicken broth is still hot. This is mostly just to keep flies out or something like that. Until that cools down, then I'm going to start in the refrigerator. Now what we got when we're done is this and let me show you a quick meal that I make with that I'm going to cheat and use a bowl just because it's convenient I made pre-made some mashed potatoes Now, I probably have enough mashed potatoes to last for two days, so two servings of mashed potatoes is what I made. But put you some mashed potatoes in a bowl.
take your barbecue chicken, shredded over top of it. Now you've got a meal. Now, you could also take this barbecue chicken, make a sandwich out of it. You could take the barbecue chicken, put it on a plate with the side of some vegetables or sweet potatoes. There's a lot of ways to use this. I could probably eat this every day and fix it a different way each time. And that's what makes this such a convenient homestead meal prep meal. Now I hope you enjoy this video. I hope I gave you some tips on how I do things around here. This saves me time. Now there is probably enough chicken in here for me to have four or five meals out of it after this one. That's four or five times this week that I don't have to cook. And uh, looks like my battery's flashing on my camera. I better finish this up quick. So, thank you for watching this video. As always, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your homestead. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.